to me. My wife and I were talking about this actually a while back. And I want to introduce this series. I'm just going to call this series of messages Release. Come on, I want everybody to say Release. And I believe it's not just a, a teaching, but it's really a prophetic challenge to you in the season that we're coming into. As we're stepping into the summer months, I feel like new things are happening. After eight months, the bridge to Gulf Breeze is open again. Hallelujah. I thought maybe that, that's prophetic. God's reopening things that have been shut down in your life. And uh, I'm calling today's message weight loss. And I don't know if I got that from God or if it's just because I've been on a diet for the last several weeks and it's been haunting me. So, but God wants you to get rid of some weight. Amen. Yeah, I still got a spare tire, but it's more like a Honda tire now. I used to have a Michelin Radio, Radio X. The, um, God is calling us to release things and get rid of some weight in our life. And how many know that that's not always an easy thing to do? We always want to do it, but the actual doing it is challenging. And I want you to turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12. I've got so much in me today, and I want to, on this, on this weekend, I want to just speak it out to you. Hebrews chapter 12. By the way, if you're a guest with us today, I'm Pastor Lynn, <laughs> in case you wonder who this crazy guy is talking to you. I, that's who I, and I want you to, I want to welcome you here. And for all of those watching online, I especially want to say hi to you. There are so many people all over the world that watch this, not only live right now, but also uh, throughout the day. And I believe this message is going to speak directly to you. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. And this is just a great verse all by itself. Hebrews 12, 1, it says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Say weight. weight. And the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. How many know when you have less weight, it's easier to endure? When you have less weight, it's easier to run. When you have less weight, it's easier to finish. So over the course of our journey with Christ, there are things that we tend to hold on to. Things that keep us weighed down, things that hold us back, things that keep us from getting to the place where God wants us to go. And the problem is that we tend not to let go of what our flesh wants, that God wants us to let go of in exchange for what he wants. And so there, there's many of you that are controlled strictly by your flesh. It's easy to be controlled by your flesh. I mean, whatever your flesh tells you to do, that's what you do. Well, I know I should do this, but I know I should forgive, but you don't understand what I'm going through. So, and we get in these flesh cycles and we look at everything in the flesh and we respond in the flesh and God has called us to live at a different level. He's called us to live in a different atmosphere. So whatever your desires tell you to do, that's what you do. Whatever your desires tell you to eat, that's what you eat. Whatever your desires tell you to buy, that's what you buy. And there comes a point where you have to say, God, I'm ready to trade what I want, what my flesh wants, for what you want. And when I come to the place where I can release things that have a hold on me, Everything in my life changes. Release always changes everything. People say, I can't change. I just can't stop doing this. I, can't. I have a word for you. Release. Release. Come on, when I get to that place where I release things inside me that keep me distracted and held back, I become a better husband. I become a better pastor. I become a better leader. I become a better man. When I release those things in me that are holding me back, the weights, why? Because I can endure and run when the weights are off. So 
what happens is I tend to draw back from everything that uh, when, I, when I let go of this stuff, then I, I will draw back from everything that's not adding to me, and I will draw close to the one who has purposed me. And that's what has to happen. I have to draw away from these things and move towards him. You see, when I obey God, it changes everything. We celebrated 35 years as a church last week. And when I look out at everything God has done and continues to do, it absolutely amazes me. It really does. Our church has, has grown from such small places of nothing to powerful, world-shaking influence and in ministry. We are the only church in this city that has such an amazing blend of, of color and creed. It, it, it's amazing. We're young, old, black, white, skinny, fluffy. Come on, everybody here. Everybody here looks different. And it's different. And it looks like heaven. It looks like heaven. If it makes you uncomfortable, heaven might make you uncomfortable. And that's not a good idea. So it's important. Why did this happen? Because we obeyed the word of the Lord. But problems come when I would rather obey my word than his word. But when God gives us a word, sometimes we just have to buckle down and sell ourselves for that, for that purpose. So I'm excited because I believe we're stepping into this new season of release. Come on, everybody say release. release. Come on, say it with your chest. Say release. release. Say it till it annoys your neighbor. Say release. release. Come on, I'm feeling good here today. The reason I'm excited about this is because the revelation God is giving it to, the revelation God's giving to us through his word. And I want to help attach your faith to this today. I want to set a foundation in this series because when you get a vision for your life and for what God is asking you to do, you're going to step into a whole new level. And God spoke to me in these next three months, in the summer months of this year, 2021, in our year of one, we're going to get one focus. And we're going to step out of some stuff, release some stuff, and God's bringing us to a new level. A new level in him, a new level in his power, a new level in worship, a new level in our faith, a new level in our strength, a new level in our relationship, a new level. And this is important. You've got to start by learning to hear God's voice. If you can't hear God's voice, you don't know what you do. Some people think they hear God's voice, but it's really their voice. And it just feels very passionate, so they put God's name to it, and it's not God. We have to stay in God's presence long enough to speak to him and hear him speak back. Well, Pastor Lynn, do you really think God will speak to me? Yes, I do. He is speaking to you. In fact, God is always speaking. Well, God doesn't speak to me. He is always speaking. The problem is never with God speaking. It's always with our listening. And when we get released from things and get uncrowded, listen, God's voice becomes crystal clear when no one else is talking. It's so important. That's why, that's why the devil wants you. One, one of the main ways he, he, he speaks to us is through his word. You see, the devil wants to plug your ears to God's voice. He wants to plug your ears to God's word. And that's why the devil tries to put you to sleep every time you crack open your Bible. Come on, be honest. How many have tried to read your Bible and sleep comes over you? I mean, like slumber. We don't even use that word slumber. But it's the right idea, right? Slumber comes over. It's because if you ever really hear what God is saying to you through his word, it will change how you live. It will change how you act. It will change how you think. It will change your worldview. It will change how you respond. God speaks through his word. He also speaks through others. He speaks through leaders, and this one can mess you up because people have flaws, and we have to get past our pride and be humbled enough for God to use somebody else that we know has flaws or that we might not like their personality to speak to us. But listen, if God can use a bush to speak, if God could use a donkey to speak, why can't he use your cousin who's still kind of crazy? You'd be surprised who God will use to speak to you. Maybe he's bringing the word of God to you, but you get so fixated on the vessel, you don't hear the word he's trying to say. 
So God speaks to others. He speaks to his word and he also speaks through prayer. Prayer is your secret weapon of release. So listen, if you mess with me in the natural, I'm going to handle you in the spirit. God's been showing me that. I've been praying for things. Come on, your boy is a fighter in the spirit. I will fight. If you get in my way in the natural, I will handle it in the spirit. I will. Do you hear me? God said we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So we have to take authority over things and understand that prayer is the weapon. If we would take things to the spirit in our fight first, our natural battles would be so insignificant. And when I get into natural battles and get all stressed out and worked up, what I find out is that I usually haven't been praying or I'm not praying about that situation or I didn't go to God first. I went somewhere else first. So one of the things that happens when you're in the spirit and when you're praying and when you're in the word of God and when you're listening to the people God's put around you is that God releases vision. And vision comes for your personal life, vision comes for your workplace, vision for the church, vision for this house. And I want to make sure you don't go into the next season and you already made a plan and you're going to ask God to bless a plan that he didn't make. I'm going to come on. How many of you ever made a plan and then asked God to co-sign it besides me? Oh, I'm coming for you today. Listen, I got so much in me. I'm just just shooting this up out. But it's going to take you to another level. It's going to be rocket fuel for you. Come on. What happens is when we create the plan and ask God to bless us, it blesses the plan. It often becomes a problem. And then usually we end up asking God to fix the problem that we created in our own pride and disobedience or offense or hurt in decisions that we make without him. So in this season of release, it has to be about asking God, what do you want? What do you want for me? What does he want from our relationships? What does he want for me to do this year? What does he want from my faith and my heart? Because if we get in his plan, we will not waste as much time. So to start with, we've got to release anything inside of us or outside of us that's attached to our flesh. Otherwise, we end up going around and around in the same cycles. And you can go here, there, and you're the same, and you're dealing with the same stuff. You see, God wants to do more than he's ever done in our life, but it's going to take making more time for him, making more time to talk to him, making time to listen to him. The problem with our prayer life many times is that we do too much of the talking in our praying. We think when I run out of words to say, I can't pray. How could I pray for an hour? It's because you're not doing enough listening. God, what God has to say, we we, we covered this right at the beginning when I stood up here, is, is more important than what I have to say. Right? So if that's the truth, then it's good for me to listen to him. Yes, talk to God. God loves to hear you. Pray to him. But also part of prayer is listening and hear what he has to say to you. And then as we move forward, vision gets released and we know where to go. Why is vision such a big deal? Look at Proverbs 29, 18. It's actually a familiar verse. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read it to you. You don't have to turn there. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Have you heard that verse before? Where there is no vision, the people perish. That word perish actually means they run off the road or they derail. But he that keeps the law, the law is the track, right? The law is God's will, his purpose, his word. Happy is he. Now, I want to read this from the Message Bible. And usually the Message Bible is my sister's domain to preach out of. But I'm going to pull from this version of the Bible. I know you're very proud, aren't you? Because... When I read this, and, and when I study, just so you know, when, when you study the Bible, when I study, there's, there's great software things, you got different translations, and sometimes when you read through the translations, certain ones will really open up what the scripture is saying in that moment, because it came from the same original language, but as people translate that, it means the same thing, it's not different meanings, but it, it kind of 
magnifies it. And I want to read this from the Message Bible because this is a powerful verse when you read it there, Proverbs 29, 18. It says this, if people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. I'm going to read that again. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. So some of you have been tripping all over the last season of your life because you didn't see what God was doing. You were watching what you planned to do, but you didn't intend or attend to what God was doing. But the Bible says when you attend to it, when you pay attention to what God is doing, when you participate in what God is showing you, you become most blessed. Most is what we call in English a superlative. That means the maximum level, maximum blessing. I want to walk in the maximum potential of blessing for this season in my life. So you have an assignment, and that first part of that assignment is you need to see what God is doing. In other words, what God is trying to put the magnifying glass on in your life, what is he trying to get out of your life? You have to see what God is doing. Then when you see what God is doing, the next step is to act on what God is doing. Right? It's one thing to know God is doing something. It's another thing to participate in it. And many people know, yeah, God's trying to make me into something. Yeah, I know I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes, I know God's got a purpose for my life before the foundations of the earth. But then they don't do anything. Right? So it's like God's trying to bring me to a place of purity, but I'm not willing to cut off and release the people that are tempting me to walk in perversion. I know God's trying to use the gifts he put in me, but I'm scared to let anybody see my gifts. We have fear of rejection or this fear, that fear, and the enemy keeps us from participating in what God is doing in our life. Do You see, it's one thing to know God's doing something. It's another thing to say, I don't care what this is going to cost. I'm going to take part of it. I don't care how scary it is. I'm going to do it. So here's what God is wanting to do in you in this season and what God is saying to you in this series. Write this down. If you're writing things down, and it's good to write this down. In this season, because this is a word from the church, and you could call this prophetic from heaven. In this season, God wants to release you from, and God wants to release you into. Come on, I want you to say, release from, and release into. Say it again, release from and release into. This is a word from the Lord to Jubilee Church today and everybody who will attach their faith to it. God is going to release you from a place of bondage. He's going to release you from weights that have been holding you back. Whatever has you tied up, whatever relationship has you bound up, whatever thought process keeps you limited, the family cycle that has you messed up, God said, this is the time for release. Do you hear me today? This is God's word for you. I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to those demons who thought they would never be touched, but they're a little shaky today because they know that they are getting ready to be released. There are bondages you've been tied to so long you thought they were a part of you. And the truth is, we get into bondage that become a part of us and we just think we have to live with it because it's just who I am. If I live with my anger, if I live with my frustration, if I live with my fear. But this is the season where God is identifying those things and he's coming to release those things so you can step into a season of blessing over the next 90 days where God is going to be opening doors. you got to be ready to step into it. You have to have faith to believe for God for things you've never seen before. You have to be obedient to pray and to step out in ways you've never prayed and stepped out before. You have to be obedient to give and let go where God says to and be wise and hold on where God says to. You've got to hear his voice. This is the season. Come on. It's your release. Oh, I'm coming for you. I'm coming to serve notice on everything that thought it was going to stay with you. Every attitude 
every lazy thought, every doubting spirit, every plan of Satan that thought it had permanent resident in your life. I'm getting ready to tell you today in the name of Jesus Christ that things are bound in heaven and bound on earth, released in heaven, released on earth. I release Satan's hold on your life, on your family, on your finances, on your future, on your mindset, on your discouragement. I release his hand of control and I release you into the purpose of God on your life. Come on. God is saying something to us. If we can respond to this today, if we can respond, God will get us somewhere we've never been before. I believe that every plan of Satan that had a per it's getting an eviction notice today. Come on. But God only, not only wants to release you from stuff, he also wants to release you from the perspective of bondage. Now, this is important because God's not only releasing us from the place of bondage, he's releasing us from the perspective of bondage. Why is that important? Because you can be delivered from a place, but the perspective can still operate in you. God delivered the children of Israel from Egypt, they, but they'd been slaves for 400 years. So God released them from the place of their bondage, but then it took 40 years to remove them from the perspective of their bondage. That was the purpose of the wilderness. God had to transform the perspective of their bondage so they could move into the place of their blessing, of their promise. The problem was they resisted God in the process, and what should have taken three years took 40 years. They ended up turning the place where God was trying to release them and renew their mind into the place where they died. That's a whole other message right there. God can bring you out of Egypt and Egypt not be out of you. Don't die in the wilderness. It's another word from the Lord for somebody today. Don't die in the wilderness. You see, release can't just come on the outside. It has to come on the inside. You have to let God change the perspective that not only are you delivered, but you think like you're delivered. That you recognize I'm free. There's so many illustrations about the Egypt. I'd always tell this story when I was a kid, and they used to have, they used to use elephants in the circus, and they don't do a lot of that anymore, but walk where, you could walk where the animals were kept, and they had this little ring with a little chain on their foot, and that elephant would stay right there. That elephant was so much stronger than that chain, but the problem was it had been trained up since it was a baby elephant with the chain attached to a pole or a tree that when that thing was around its foot, it couldn't move. So the bondage was in the elephant's mind, not even in the elephant's reality. And that's how the enemy does, does for us too. You've got let, to let God change, change that perspective in you. So it, I'm, I'm going to go on. Let me, let me just go a little deeper with this here because God delivered you from poverty. But poverty is not just a place. Poverty is not just a bank account. It's a perspective. You can be blessed and still have a poverty mindset and make poverty decisions. It's why 70% of lottery winners end up bankrupt within three years. Why? Because even though they become millionaires out here, their perspective, their mindset, and decision are still acting and thinking like somebody who's poor. So God brings you blessing, but you still won't be generous. Why? Because you think poor. Because you think that's my security and you don't realize that God has given you everything that you need. Back some months ago, my wife and my daughter especially, they love to watch My 600 Pound Life. Have you ever seen that TV show? And people lose weight and they get stomach bypass and they're these, they, they journey through these very emotional processes of, of, of weight loss. But here's the thing, what happens, and, and one of the shows was talking about this, that, that people that lose a lot of weight, they still move and, 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 and walk like they had that weight on even after they lost the weight. Because they got released from the weight, but the perspective of the weight is still alive in them. That is exactly like many believers. God releases us from the weights, but the perspective of the weight is still in us. So, so we, got, we, we're living in the perspective of weight 
that God's delivered us from. God's delivered you from perversion, but when you get free from that place, you still don't trust anybody because you think everybody's going to take advantage of you. God says, I have released you not only from bondage, but I've also released you from the perspective of bondage in this season. Come on, you can run away from your situation and find the same thing at a different place. You can go to New York or California or Wyoming. The same issues will show up with different faces. And you thought it was that person or this person or that church or this thing. You find out, oh, it's something else because I'm visiting here. It's the same thing. You can change jobs. You can change careers. You can change majors in college. But until your perspective is delivered, say this. Say, same devil. Different place, same devil, different face. You hear me? So not only is God coming to release you from something, God is also coming because he wants to release you into something. So he's releasing me from the bondage, from the weight, from the perspectives that hold me back. But now he also is trying to release me into something because release has both meanings. You see, God wants to bring you out from Egypt so he can take you into your promise. And God is releasing you into a new place this year, the place of promise, the place of blessing, the place of vision. God has put in your heart words that some of you have held on to for 20 years are getting ready to start coming to pass in the next 90 days because it's a season that God is opening doors. And God spoke this to me in this series. There's a purpose for you. There's a purpose for your life and your family. And when God opens the doors, you've got to remember those doors are attached to purpose. They're not just to improve your life. And make you more comfortable. It's, it's attached to purpose. They're not just an opportunity that came about. It's, it's a purpose that God has he's trying to bring you into. And a lot of things don't happen because we're still tied to things we won't release. There are so many things that, that God's trying to say us through this. In the next few weeks, we're going to talk about it. We, we end up stuck because we're staying tied down to things. We stay tied to people who were never meant to be released into the next place that God's trying to bring us. And then we end up stuck. But I'm telling you, Jubilee Church, we are being released into a new season. Release from fear and confusion, release from poverty and lack, release from identity confusion, release from habits and mindset, controlling your life, release from worry and depression. When you get free, then you can become everything God called you to be. And I don't have to then worry about the approval of people because I know God's already approved what he called. I'm not perfect yet. I make mistakes, but I have the approval of God because of God. Not because of me. And so God's word says, before you were formed, before I was even alive and breathing, he said, I knew you. They might not know you, but God knows you. (laughs) That's good. Somebody needs it. They might not know you, but God knows you. And he has a plan for you. And the word says what his plans are, that they're to prosper you and not harm you, to give you hope and future. This is what God wants, and it comes through release. And some preachers are preaching all about the harm, like God brings harm, and God will use harm, and he'll use the stuff in our life to perfect us and, and challenge us and change us. So everything in your life really is a blessing if you'll release it to God. But what you have to understand is God's ultimate purpose is to prosper you and give you hope and to bring you to a place that he's prepared for you. It's sometimes helpful getting a picture of what God's saying in this because it's so hard just in words to do it. So I, I found a video clip to give you a picture of what I believe God is saying for this season, kind of a prophetic picture. So I want you to listen to this video, and I want you to see this release happen, and then I'll explain it to you in a minute. I gave it to him last minute, so hopefully we're going to uh, see if we can play that video.
center court at deep throttle. Eight plus 33 seconds into flight. Under the power of 5.1 million pounds of thrust, Falcon Heavy is headed to space. We're throttling down at T plus 40 seconds I to prepare for bucket. maximum dynamic pressure. Power telemetry on nominal. We're hearing reports. Power and telemetry are nominal. Vehicle is supersonic. You may have heard the call out on net one. Vehicle is supersonic. Side boosters are throttling back up on power as we're Max through Q. the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Pico. Boosters separation confirmed. Successful separation if you can hear me over the cheering. Side boosters now beginning a flip to begin returning back to Cape Canaveral. Side boosters have begun the boost back burn. The center core has throttled back up to power. Everything looking good on the flight of Falcon Heavy. The next major event, main engine cutoff of the center core and separation ignition of the second stage. So what I want you to see in this video, besides a rocket taking off, is I want you to see prophetically that as a season that you're coming into because I want you to see what release looks like. And, and if you could really hear clearly at the very beginning, right at the end of the countdown, were the words ignition lift off. You see, release with a rocket is all you, if you ever watch a rocket, even different types of rockets, they're actually a series of releases to get them out of this atmosphere into another atmosphere. But it has to start with a word from an authority that can initiate the countdown, that initiates a release in your life. So in fact, the word I'm giving you today is a word of authority that came from God, and that word is release. The word in, uh, for the rocket had to first come from an authority in NASA, just like the word in your life has to first come from an authority in heaven. God has to speak it. When you get a release from God, then everything else can start to happen. Then this is where many of us make a mistake. You start a countdown for what you want, and what happens after that is, Houston, we have a problem. Right? Why? Because you're acting outside of the authority of God speaking in your life. God hasn't given you a release, and you started taking it in your own hands. You might have pulled the God said card and told everyone that you had a word of authority for what you're doing to give you validation for what you're thinking, but God will still not bless your action because you took his name in vain and operated in yourself. It's important. This is why prayer and fasting is so important before you make a move, before you start a business, when you get into a relationship. You need the word of authority before you try to release yourself into something new. Now look at this. When a rocket is first brought out to launch, it is on a platform and it is held up with structures. Things that give it structure, support and stability and God brings you into seasons where he puts things around you to give you structure and support and stability and and that's all good until the point of release but at the point of release that that bar that's holding the rocket here has to pull back as the burners go there has to be various places of release where it releases from the existing place so it can go to the next place then as they ignite, everybody starts counting down and you see all this power and energy rising up from underneath. And as the power emerges from the rocket, the existing structure support has to release so the rocket can go. And what I'm telling you right now is that there are some things that God has been using to stabilize you. There are structures you've gotten familiar with. There might be familiar surroundings. There might be things that you're used to happening this way. But when it comes time for a season of release in your life, and they come at periodic times, these stabilizing, secure uh, dependencies have to be released so that 
the power can push you to a new level. Do you hear me? If you depend too much on your security, uh, your security blankets and your structures, when God releases you, it could bring destruction. You don't want to ignite rocket fuel without releasing the structure because it'll explode. And many of you have been trying to launch and trying to get to your next level, but you're still connected to things that are keeping you grounded. In other words, you've kept hold of old mindsets. I'm talking internal things. But it can also be external things. Old relationship, past habits, because they were a security for you. They helped you sustain and stay stable, but now God's trying to launch you, and he's saying those past things can't go with you where I'm taking you. Right? Former attitudes, former connections may not be able to go with you to the next place God's trying to take you. So you have to release something back here so you can move forward up here. But even after liftoff, if you notice, that's why I played that whole clip for you, The releasing hasn't finished yet. When you get a word of authority, you let go of the past mindsets, you lift off into your release. There's another thing that has to be released in order to keep you moving upward. If you noticed when the rocket got to a certain level, there were two rocket boosters on the side. Did you see at the end of the video where the rocket boosters had to disconnect and be released? This was so profound to me because some of the things that God will use to help get you off the ground won't be able to continue with you all the way to the place he's taking you. I've had people that started with me, were a blessing to me, got off the ground with me that didn't continue with me. Why? Because they weren't equipped to go to the destination God was taking me. Why? Not everyone that starts with you is willing to grow with you. Do you hear me? Some people have a faith at this level, but God's trying to take me up here, so I have to decide, am I going to stay stuck here, or am I going to release something so I can get to the next level? I still love you. I'm still going to hug you. We can still have lunch together, but in terms of what God is doing, I've got to move. I've got to move on. On every level, we have this tendency to hold on to things. Attitudes, old testimonies, past experiences. Well, this is the way God did it, but God's doing a new thing. Isaiah said it way back. Behold, I will do a new thing. God's more creative than to do the same things over and over again. He's bigger than that. He can do something new. His nature doesn't change, but he's always doing something new. Come on, it's easy to think because it helped you off the ground that it needs to stay with you. And I felt the spirit of God on that. I don't know if you did. But God says, I can't let you break into the next atmosphere until you what? Release. Come on, somebody here, you're mourning a lost financial benefit, a lost relational benefit, a lost something. I have a word for you. Dry your eyes. God had to remove it so you could go to the next level of your destiny. Don't be sad, dry your eyes, and recognize God's doing something. So God is releasing us from things so he can release us into things. There's always levels and atmospheres like pieces of a rocket going higher. There's always things that will come off as you go higher. So the thing that you have to realize symbolically is this. God did not call you to an airplane destiny. And I like airplanes, nothing wrong with airplanes, but for for the analogy I'm using, listen, God didn't call you to an airplane. Some of you are living on an airplane level. The airplane is successful as long as it gets off the ground. Come on, you're not hearing me yet, but you're going to hear this in a second. You see, the airplane is successful if it takes off and it flies and lands in another place in the same atmosphere. That's where a lot of Christians live. And they think they're really doing something. God's really working because they took off and got somewhere. But they never changed atmosphere. You think you're in your destiny because you're flying. Well, at least it's better than staying down on the ground. And then you end up comparing yourself with other people who are lower than you. So you feel good about where you are instead of comparing yourself to where God is trying to take you. Recognize that you and all the other people you're judging by are all in the same atmosphere. 
God has given you a rocket, but you're treating it like an airplane. Go up, stay up at a certain level, and come back down. Go up, stay up at a certain level, and come back down. And this is all nice because we can control it, and, and, and we're not worried about it. We know where we're going. We know how things operate, and we live in intellectual Christianity. That's where most American Christian, most American preacher live in that. They have intellect. They know the word of God. And I'm not downplaying that because that's very important to understand and rightly divide the word of truth. But when you have no power, no fruit from that word, no miracles, no demons are casting out, no... Listen. And then you're giving teaching to explain why you're powerless. You're just in an airplane destiny. I don't want to be it. God put me in a rocket. He didn't put me in an airplane. Thank God for airplanes. But this ain't no airplane. This ain't American Airlines. Come on. Some of you are missing God's purpose for you because you're in the wrong vehicle. God hasn't called you to an airplane destiny. It just gets so hot. God's called you to a rocket destiny because he's destined you for new atmospheres. New Scary places that you haven't been to before that you're not equipped for by yourself that you have to get to in faith that you have to see God. I'm telling you, you see Christians that walk in that level and you're going to see Christians that change the world like they did in the New Testament. And these are the ones that turned the world upside down and they've come here too. God's not just trying to get you to a better place. He's trying to take you to a new place. Hmm. But to get where God is taking you, you might have to endure some pressure that you're under now to, so you can be released to a new level. I have a word for somebody right now. If you can receive this by faith, your next level is not wrapped up in what you can gain. It's wrapped up in what you can release. Your next level is not wrapped up in what you can access. It's wrapped up in what you can let go of. I'm going to let that sink in for a minute because that, that was a word for somebody today. When you have all you need already inside you, all the fullness of the Godhead bodily is in Jesus and, and you're complete in him, Colossians 2.9 says. You have it in you. You don't need anything else. You have, what you need is to let go of the stuff that's keeping you grounded. So what's in you can ignite. You're trying to get to another level with all this weight and you're not able to get up into the space that God's called you to. So this is the question you have to answer. If God is saying release, then why in the world would I hold on to so hard what's holding me back? If God's telling you to release fear, why hold on to it? If God's telling you to release the book, why are you not doing it? That was a word that came to me too, so... If God is God telling you to release your servanthood and your time, why would you be selfish with that? This word is for anybody who would attach their faith to it today. Release and watch what God will do. You don't even know the potential on the inside of you. Release some stuff and watch what God will do. Come on. If God is saying, I know this message is simple, but it's powerful. If God is saying release, that means we have to know what it means. So let me say this to you. Are you still with me? Let me give you two definitions of this word release. First definition, to allow or enable something or someone to be free from confinement, to set free. This is right from Webster. And that word allow is important because it directly implies that you have to give permission to do something. Your will has to be involved in the act of releasing. That's your key right here. Because God is ready to release his power on your life, but there's one condition. You have to allow God to move. Because God's a gentleman, and he gave you a will, and he's not going to usurp you. Sometimes I wish he would. I pray, God, just do, would you just do it in spite of me? But God wants to do it with you. You have to allow things to happen. You have to invite him into your situations and decisions. Well, is God's sovereignty not powerful enough? Of course it is. But he chooses to do it this way. You have to allow him to work. God is saying, I want to bring release in your life. I want to bring blessing. I want to bring increase. I want to heal you. But you have to allow him through faith and obedience. 
When you do, it's powerful. I love this definition. It ties to the very nature of Jesus. John 8, 36, Jesus said, if the Son makes you free, enables you to be free, you shall be free indeed. Come on, look at that. Jesus is the release point for you. Just allow Jesus to be Jesus. If the Son allows and enables you to be free, you are free. I don't care what circumstances said, what your mama said, what somebody told you when you were six years old. You need to focus on Jesus so you can get to the place that God's calling you to be. He's going to release you, and then Jesus, the Son, is going to come with authority and enable you to be absolutely free of what's holding you back. A couple of other scriptures, 2 Corinthians 3, 17. You don't have to turn there. It says this, now the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. There is release. What that means is, is the key of that verse is, is not even the word liberty. It's the word Lord. Says so the Lord is the spirit. Or you could say the spirit of God has to be the Lord or the one in control. Because as long as I'm in control, guess what? We're not going to get very high. But when the Spirit is the Lord, there's freedom. There's release. It's the source of freedom. doesn't matter what depression you've been walking around in, what lack you've been walking around in, what perversions you've been fighting. God says, let him be Lord over it, and he will bring liberty. Look at the next verse, verse 18. Then it goes on to say, But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Lord, what Lord? The Spirit that we just read about in the first verse. This Lord, that, that the, the Spirit that is the Lord is transforming us into the same image. Whose image? Jesus, the one who sets you free. Same image from glory to to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. And here you see it again, levels of transformation. And I believe you go from one place of glory to the next place of glory as you release what happened back here. And sometimes what happened back here is good. And you can remember it and tell a story about it, but you've got to move. You've got to go on to the next level, the level of transformation. So The question is, at what level are you going to allow or release God to work in your life? There's a second definition of release. Here's the second definition, to drop. To stop carrying or containing something and stop holding on to it. This brings us back to the verse that we started with, Hebrews 12.1. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that easily ensnares. Let us release the weight. So we can run with endurance the race that's set before us. This is the other part of the word of the Lord for you today. Listen closely. Let it go. That's what release means. Let the dead weight go. This is a season you have to forgive. This is a season you have to repent. You have to let things go that are holding you and keeping you from your destiny. Yes, they may have hurt you. They may have abused you. They may have stolen from you. They may have lied to you. They may have talked about you. Let it go. Let it go. You mean I should just let them off the hook like that? Let it go. Let the hook be God's hook. Let God decide. Let it go. Let your boss go, let your husband go, let your wife go. I'm not meaning like let them go, but you know what I mean. Let your kids go, let your mama go, let your daddy go. Whoever it is, whatever mindset is there, there's so much God wants to do, but you can't go to the next space. You can't go to the next atmosphere if you're holding on to things. Jesus said it another way. He who holds on to his life will lose it. But he who is willing to Release his life. We'll we'll find it. That's another message. But Jesus, God says, this season you're going to get free because you're going to be released. One more more message, message verse. I'm going to read that same verse, Hebrews 12, one we started with in the message, and then we're going to bring this thing to an end. Hebrews 12, one in the message, he says, do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way. All these veterans cheering us on. thought, isn't that interesting on Memorial Day weekend? It means we'd better get on with it 
strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. I love that whole verse just for the last phrase of it. I love what it re- how it reads just for the last phrase of it. No parasitic. Do you know what a parasite is? A parasite is something that attaches to you. It sticks to you and it feeds on your nutrients. So you can't use the nutrients. It's, it's actually taking from you nutrients that belong to you. And sometimes we're not able to do what God calls us to do because we've been letting parasites attach themselves to us, unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, cling to me and suck me dry. And it's feeding on all your hope and it's feeding on all your peace and it's feeding on all your faith and it's feeding on all your focus. Release the parasite. Release the The parasite. God is coming to set you free. And do you know why this is so important and why he wants you to be released? He wants you to be released so you can be available for his use. He wants you to be released so you can help other people be released. It's so important. There are co-workers that you work with right now that if you were released, you could help them. There are neighbors right now that if you were released, you could help them. There are children right now, if you were released, you could help them. Last verse, I promise. Jesus said this, Luke 4, 18. He goes into the temple and he reads this verse. They almost killed him for reading this verse. And I want you to hear this. Jesus said this in Luke 4, 18. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of the who? The Lord. The spirit of lordship is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty, at release all those who are oppressed. To proclaim the acceptable year, the acceptable season of the Lord. I want you to pay attention to that first phrase. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, I want you to say that with me right now. One, two, three. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Raise your volume ten times and say it again. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Say it again. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Say it again. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. One more time. Come on. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Come on. Some of you never realize this because you think you're too messed up for the Spirit of the Lord to be upon you. But I'm trying to tell you something right now. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. It's targeting you. It's coming to search you out. There is a tracking device in the Spirit on your purpose. God is pursuing you and pushing you to get you to another level. He is, the spirit of the Lord is on you. And then he said, because he's anointed me. Anointing means you have approval and permission to be who God's called you to be. He's approved you. What is it for? What is that approval for? What is that permission for? To bring good news to the poor. It says, because he sent me. Come on, say, God sent me. Did you hear that? That's why you're at the job you don't like. God sent you. That's why you're at the school you're at. God sent you. That's why you're here. God sent you. Don't, listen, God doesn't waste anything. Romans 8 is very clear that he uses all things to work together for good. Or you could say for his purpose. To those who love God and that are the called according to his purpose. The reason we have to be released is because we are the Jesus that people say we are Messiah the deliverer for our generation Jesus in you puts the same messianic anointing was in Jesus not to die on the cross he already did that but to continue his work to continue his work that's why he said greater things will you do than I've done because the spirit of the Lord is on you 
Because he's anointed you. Because he has sent you. This is why you have to be released. It's not just about you being free. It's about everything around you needing to be touched, needing to be delivered. A world that is lost and dying and spinning in circles and stumbling all over itself in darkness needs a church who will rise up as one in the light of God to let the spirit of the Lord who is on us speak through us to bring hope and life and strength. That is the season we're in today. Men and women of God, that is the season. That's the season. Lose the weight. God has something amazing ahead. Close your eyes with me right now. Father, we are right here as a church. Everyone here, everyone watching online, those who are guests here, everyone that will attach their faith to this today, we're agreeing with your word today. And we're not going to stand by and do nothing, but we're going to obey and trust you. Come on. Lord, I pray right now in this moment, in the next two moments of this, Lord, give people faith and hope like never before. Lord, I see a supernatural grace of release coming on us to do things we haven't been able to let go of. Maybe there's things we didn't need to let go of back here, but we're moving into a new season. God, help us to follow you, to know what you're doing, to see what you're doing. No more stumbling around. No more backing up. Mm. Come on, I feel the presence of the Lord right now. He's speaking to some of you. He's stirring you up. Right now while I'm talking, God is reminding some of you of places of your purpose that he's called you to. Vision that he's kind of reopening your eyes to things that have been pulling you back, maybe they even feel like a struggle on the inside. Today, God's going to make you free. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Come on. You have to be released from so you can release into. I want everybody to stand with me right now. Holy Spirit, I thank you right now that you're putting us on a divine rocket, you're igniting the fuel, and you're causing the old things to to release so that we can go into a new atmosphere. As a church, as individuals, as families, and relationships. Come on, now listen, while I'm talking to you, I want you to be very careful to hear what I'm gonna say because you have to know this today. You have to hear what I'm saying to you. The enemy of your soul is already trying to make a setup out here to make you disconnect from this word that I just preached to you. So I want you to settle in your mind right now, everyone in your seat, I want you to settle in your mind right now in your heart that you are not gonna let go of this word. No matter what you see, no matter what happens, no matter what circumstances, no matter who says something, who makes you mad at lunch, I don't care today, right now, I want you to set in your mind right now, I'm not gonna let go of this word. You've got to attach your faith to this word. Now. With that said, here's what I want to pray for today. If you're here and you know that there are things in your life right now, things right now, things that you could actually name, not generality specifics, things that you need to let go of specifically internal things, mindsets, issues, things that you need to let go of so that God can take you to another place. Come on, Lord, I don't even know how to do it. You're just going to come and say, God, I just, I open my hands. Here I am. If that's you, I want to pray for you right now. If there's things you said, I want to let go of this. And here's what I want you to do. And we do this every week. And it's powerful because it brings us to a place together. But I want you to slip out of your seat, wherever you are in the building. And I want you to, if that's you, and I want you to just walk down to the front and stand. We're going to pray together up here. There's going to be a divine release moment right here up at the front of this altar. Come on, there's going to be a divine moment of releasing. Come on, there's things God has called you to do. There's things he's called you to say. Today, God is bringing you somewhere. Come on, it's not going to be like yesterday. It's not going to be a a recycle of something else that's happened. Come on, I feel like when you make a step down here, that's like an act of faith. It's like a step of faith. And when you step down here, let me tell you, God himself is meeting you right here. And his power is coming to release something on the inside of you. Now, for those of you that are not down here for this, and some of you that are down here are probably down here for both, there are things that God, for for others of you, that God is, is trying to get you into. 
There's visions, there's words you've been holding on to, there's things you've been believing. If you're not already down here and that's you, I want you to come and join these down here. We're gonna have a release moment. Releasing from, so we can release into. Releasing from, so we can release into. Come on, and for a lot of people, including me, it's both sides. Uh, There's some God wants to release me into, so I have to get released from. So for a lot of us, it's both of those things. But some of us, God's just focusing you on the things you need to let go of, and that's right now your primary focus. You may not even know yet where he's taking you to. But for, and for others, there might be things you've been releasing from, but you're, you're believing for something that God has spoken to you. But wherever that fits in you, today, God the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord is here today. He has purposed you. He has seen you. Before you were in your mother's womb, he's put a purpose for you to prosper you, to give you hope. He's got a future laid out that you can't see yet. And that future does not depend on what's happening on planet earth. It depends on what's happening in the kingdom of God in heaven. And God's got to speak to you. Some of you, God is going to open your ears to his voice like you've never heard his voice so clearly. It's going to scare you. You're going to be walking down and God's going to speak to you. Come on. Whatever it is right now. All right. If you're down here right now, I want you to shoot both hands up. If you're at your seats. Would you just stretch your hands to those that are up here and just begin to pray for them? Come on, right now. We're going to make a moment of prayer right now. And I want you to just say this. Jesus, you are the son that makes me free. Holy Spirit, you are the Lord. And you bring me into freedom. So I open my hands and my heart and my life everything inside of me and I release it to you right now come on you may not even feel you just say God take me I release it to you I release me to you right now and bring me into the place that you purposed for me in the name of Jesus Now with your hands up, I want you to pray right now and be very specific. Be very specific with the Lord. Speak the word of the Lord. Come on, God's spirit is on you. You might say, I don't even know if I have a relationship with God. I don't know if God hears me when I pray. Right now is your day. Ask him, Lord, come into my heart. Come forgive me. He'll become the Lord of your life. Just like that, just ask him, just let go of the sin, let go of the old self. Come on, Jesus, I give my life to you. Right now, whatever it is, if there's specific things, there might be names, you need to name somebody's name right now. There might be things right now that are specific things in your vision, in your heart. You need to speak right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, Holy Spirit. It's our season of release. It's our time of release, God. Jesus, Take us to a place that we've never been. Let us see what we've never seen, God. Lord, shake loose those things that hold us back so we can get to the place that you're calling us to go. Lord, let us see something, God. Lord, you've given us a city, a nation, the nations of the earth, God. As your people, we have to be ready to do what you're calling us to do, what you're releasing us for, God. Bring release to us, Jesus. Bring release to this house. Bring release to my house, oh God. Bring release to us today. Jesus. Oh my God, just pray. Don't stop. Don't stop. God's doing something. He's shaking something loose in you. I know this is a different kind of ministry moment. God himself is meeting with you. God himself is meeting with you right now. Go ahead, worship team. Come on. Surrender is hard. It's almost impossible without the Spirit of the Lord. But He's going to get you into surrender. That means release. Blessed Savior, I surrender all. Sing it again. I surrender. Everything. I'm letting it go. I'm releasing it. Every person, I'm releasing them. Every past situation, I'm releasing it. 
Every thought about myself, I'm releasing it. Every limiting thing, I'm releasing it. My blessed Savior, I I surrender all. Oh, Jesus, come and take us. I surrender, Jesus. I let it go. I'm not holding on. When it comes up tomorrow, I'm going to let it go. When I get afraid on Tuesday, I'm going to let it go. When I'm tempted on Wednesday, I'm going to let it go. When the devil comes to discourage me on Thursday, I'm going to let it go. On Friday, when I feel like I'm stuck, I'm going to let it go. And I'm going to come back next Sunday, come on in a whole new place. Every day. Stages of release. Levels of release. From glory to glory. Transforming levels. Transforming levels. I surrender. Now just like that. Here's the awesome thing about release. It's just a decision, really. It's a decision. And when you decide and God comes and connects with your decision, just like that, it breaks. God's strong enough to break any chain and it doesn't take long to break a chain. He's strong enough to break any demon of hell that tries to attack your life, your mind, your emotions, your family. He can break it and it's just like that. When you release it to him, come on, the devil might challenge it, but you release it. Tomorrow you release it. Tuesday you release it. Wednesday you release. Thursday you're living in release. Friday, Saturday, you're living in release. Come on, this is a decision that you're making. This altar is an entry point to a process that God's taking you to. Do you believe this is a word of the Lord for you today? How many believe this is a word of the Lord directly for you for you today? I believe it. Come on. Amen. Come on, give the Lord an offering of your praise. He is worthy.